Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we are starting a brand new campaign as the Veil vale of Darwinian in Divide and Conquer version 5. Now it did get the votes. 45% of you voted for the Veil vale of Darwinian with 27% for Dale and Bree respectively. So we are going to be playing the Veil vale of Darwinian, a great faction. I do really like them. I like the choice. I like what you get to do, and I quite like their unit roster as well. It's quite nice and a quite unique unit roster. Now, quickly before we get into the video, guys, I want to thank you for the continued support on the channel. We have just passed 2,300 subscribers on the way to 3,000. So if you haven't subscribed already, please consider clicking that like and that subscribe button button and thank you to everyone who has already subscribed now without further ado guys let's get into the campaign map so here we are guys on the campaign map of course as the veil vale of darwinian and we aren't going to make this series into a story campaign like the seleucid one just because we're already running the seleucid one uh, in parallel with this and it'd be too much work to do two at the same time however don't worry all you story stands, the next Divide and Conquer campaign will be a story one, I promise that, and it will be an evil faction, so that should be really good fun. Instead, I'm going to read out these messages that you get at the start of the game. If you don't want to hear them or you've heard them before, you can skip ahead through the chapters, so just look for the next chapter, which will be the starting moves on the campaign. So, the Vale of Darwinian. Darwinian is the land of wine. Though it would be fair to say that we simply till the earth with greater skill than other winemakers. A legacy of a quietly passed on legend of long ago. If to be believed, a tale of woods that oft moved and spoke in lengthy wheezes of secrets of the earth. We had friendship with these creatures and our farmers learned much in their tutelage from these elder wonders. They taught us patiently in their laborious, softly spoken way. Whatever the truth in that, we now trade with many, a web of wealth widely spun, and we spend much of our produce north, up the river running, called the Kelduin by our elven friends, to Esgaroth, Dale, Erebor, and the fairest halls of all in Erin Galen. So trade is our essence then, wines that make even the elves feel what mortals feel only too often. That is our secret. King Thranduil and his line in Erengallen is our friend and ally. And there are those of the fairer race that live amongst us in honour. They live amongst us perhaps not just for our wines, for we have a heritage that traces through the tangled lines of history. Adani, they called us, the Eldar of old. And we were here before the Adain gathered their rewards for their heroism in Beleriand. But as not all elves went west, Neither did the men we were all go west. We were the precursors of the House of Hador, later known so well for their tragic heroes rather than their wondrous wines, which, I wonder, is the greater in its lasting. There is irony sunk deep within this, for we are as noble as we have ever been, have endured wars between the Dunedain and the tribes of the south and the vicious warriors of the east. An uneasy peace, never acknowledged, lies between us and the inhabitants of vast Rune. We even till our lands using their kine, those great white oxen that dwell on the shores of the inland sea. These are the very same that King Varondil hunted and slew to make the great horn of Gondor. But there is no friendship with their masters to be found, nor will there ever be, and we see much unrest along the shores of the inner sea. Our merchants and our allies run true, as if they were the very lifeblood of our kingdom, yet our military follows the patterns of those we treat with, organized along the lines of those of the lake men of Dale and Esgaroth for the greater part. We have a dualistic society, fostered by the elves amongst us, and our people have learned their ways of war in turn. We have traded good money for the weapons of the dwarves, few in number, yet effective all the same. We fight when it is needed, yet we are not warlike in manner. There is a coming storm, movement in the east, vast herds and many wains moving around the Sea of Rune. 
Shadows gather around the mountains of Mordor, and glints of flame and lightning gutter feebly in our eyes. But we are distant from whatever evils transpire therein. To the folk of Gondor, the tragic remnants of the Adain bloodlines, it must be enough to make them cower in the face of the storm, like a crack in a warsmith's anvil. When called to war, we will not side in any way other than we have in the past. We are the Atani, as all good men were before Beleriand. And we will fight for our friends, both elves and men. These we would choose to die for and with. And the East is no friend, leaving Mordor and the shadow of Mirkwood. There is little choice there. If forced to war, we will use the wealth of our bounteous lands to pay for it. Our armed forces are not fat and lax. They drill with precision, and we bear weapons made by men and dwarves, bows of Greenwood the Great, and the skill of the Northmen we have absorbed over many centuries trains our cavalries. When war comes, Darwinian will be ready, is ready, as one we await our fate, our survival, or our doom. Cool. Very interesting. Giving you a bit of a flavor of the elves and men that live in Dorwinian. And we'll also talk about the land, a land of two people. Dorwinian is a warm and fertile land and is known for its unmatched wines, long summers, and peaceful existence. However, to the locals, Dorwinian is known as a land of two cultures. The Northmen, kindred of the Dalesmen and Rohirrim, and the long-lost Avari. The Avari are a group of elves who opted to not make the great journey with Arome at the Awakening, and instead settled in the east of Middle-earth. They shunned their own kin and claimed Wind and Forest as their home. There, at the base of Mount Kinlai, they built a great city to rival even Nargothrond, Mornathel. In their hidden city, they dwelt for thousands of years, unheeded by the world, in peace. However, in the mid-Third Age, long before the memory of any living Northman, the ancient capital of the Avari was sacked by an overwhelming force of Easterlings in one of Middle-earth's most devastating battles. Many Avari lives were lost, but a great many elves managed to flee to Dorwinian where they were welcomed and found shelter. Filled with sadness and grief for the loss of Mornathel, a great host of Avari soon departed Dorwinian and headed northeast, disappearing from the pages of history. Only the remnant Avari, those who stayed in Dorwinian, know where their kin now reside, and they keep this a closely guarded secret. For the remnant Life has been peaceful and good, and they have integrated more and more into human society, even allowing the Vine Regent to sit on the Avarin Remnant Council. There is still an unquiet in the Avari, however, as they live so close to their ancestral home, but cannot reclaim it. Norway often attempts to convince the Vitna court to reclaim the city, as he believes that should the banners of Darwinian fly above the parapets of Mornathel, then the Avari will return again, and Darwinian will rise anew in glory. So, that is our elven choice, and Mornathel is down here. No spoilers. <laughs> down here, um, and we can go and take it. Uh, I don't think it's something we want to take straight away, because it has quite a large garrison, honestly. Quite a big garrison. Uh, and we are here in Middle-earth as Darwinian. So let's take a look at our cities, what we have, and a few of our generals and the troops that we have. And uh, we can have a look at uh, what we're going to do as well, what our plan is going forward. So we're going to bring our diplomat down just to get trade with the Easterlings to start with. I know, um, you know, trading with the Easterlings seems a bit, you know, counter, you know, counter the good narrative we're going for. But getting a bit of trade, getting a bit of money off them early on is uh, definitely something we want to do. I'm not going to ally them. I think that's just a bit cheap if we are going to fight them long term. I don't want to, you know, just have an easy ride the whole way through this campaign. And uh, I, although I didn't mention it before, we are playing on very hard, very hard, of course, guys. So 
let's have a look at some of our generals. We have Athel here over here, who is in Naburka, which is only a village, a tiny little town over here. And uh, he has Athala Rangers, one of the Ranger units. Eight melee, six missile, and 13 defense. So what we're going to do is we're going to get Athel here off here straight away. And we're going to send him to our second, um, not city, our actual... Um, this little fort over here, Strondost. And this is our main defense against the evils of the Easterlings of Rune. So um, we are going to defend in this little fort here. And Fourthwin is our second general over here. And he has quite a nice defensive general, the Regent Spearguard. One of our later, you know, later game units that can make uh, Spearwall. Eight attack, but 21 defense. Not too bad. Not amazing. But not too bad nonetheless. So he's going to be defending down here with some of the Thorn Guard and the Thorn Blazemen. And these are the early game units you get. Four attack, nine defense. But they can form a spear wall for the Thorn Guard. And the Thorn Blazemen, seven um, uh, attack and ten defense. So not fantastic units, but not horrendous nonetheless. So they're going to be better than some of the like really rubbish early game uh, Easterling units, but not that much better. Over here, we have Vine Regent Harwin, who has the High Paladins, which is our standard bodyguard. 16 attack and 26 defense, although it is not effective against armor. It's a very nice unit. It's got a mixture of elves and uh, humans in it, as you can see, which is really cool. And yeah, he's a great leader, to be fair, but he's also quite a good... Uh, a good uh, governor. So if we stick him back in there. Yeah, it's about 150 worth uh, of gold that he provides there. So we're going to bring the uh, these militias. These Vinelord levies. These are our worst troops. Three attack and six defense. Down here to defend in that port. Over here, we have Vinelord Swain, who is our faction heir. And he also has high paladins. And with him, he has some actual uh, thorn blazemen. And some Thorn Crossbowmen. So you can see melee attack of 4, missile attack of 6, and total defense of 6. Which is not great, because Crossbowmen, as many of you know, are really not a good unit. <laughs> so, yeah, they're not great. But then up here in the fort, we have something a lot better. We have Big Norway, the leader of the Avari Elves, with a melee attack of 10, missile attack of 9, and 24 defense for the Moriquendi Sentinels. A very nice elven unit, especially... In this region. With them we have the Avari Warriors. 13 attack and 20 defense. Which is fantastic. Especially early game. For a Elven Sword and Board unit. And then we've got the Avari Spearmen. Who uh, are effective against armor. I believe. That is with the Javis that they throw. Um, and they have three Javis. But also a melee attack of 9. And a defense of 22. So a really nice defensive unit. And then the Avari Shadows over here, the Elven Archers. Uh, exceptional accuracy and a range of 220 meters with a missile attack of 8 and a defense of 15. So this army is really, really excellent. And we are going to try and use it to the best of our abilities early on. We are going to get some Rovanian Riders, but we're going to go straight up to Ilanin up here. Uh, and we're going to siege it down. Now, I'm hoping that they will come out of the... Uh, out of the um, city and attack us. They do have one more unit than us, but I believe they might think it's a little bit easy. So if they do, what we'll do then is remove the Avari Shadows and hopefully they'll sally out next turn. If that's not the case, we probably will wait until Alanin, Alanin um, you know, is sieged down. It only takes five turns. And while we're doing that, we'll build up our economy. So what are we going to do in terms of building? Over in Karasant, I think Mason's Hall is the best thing just to get, you know. In fact, what we might do, I'm going to build. So the income is 727 there. It's 809 in Santanwi. So in Santanwi, I'm going to build a port, although we haven't built a Mason's Hall. And then we'll build a Mason's Hall in Strondost. And in terms of our money, we are losing money. That's why I kind of wanted to not build that Mason's Hall in Strondost to start with. In fact, what we're going to do, we're going to build a port in Strondost as well. I know it will look, so it won't look like it'll make too much extra money, but it will do once those, uh, that extra trade fleet becomes available, which is when it gets built. Uh, so we've spent a lot of money there making that, but that's fine. And what we're going to do with our little bit of extra money 
is recruit a Thorn Rider, which is our standard cavalry. Not so great with a four attack and six charge, nine defense. But cavalry is really good in this game. So uh, Darwinian Swordmasters with a nine attack and 12 defense. These are some of our later game units. So in case you don't know, guys, with version five... Um, you can get your, you know, your post barracks event units early, uh, uh, right from the start. So you don't need uh, the barracks event. Well, there is no barracks event anymore, so you can get them early on, which is nice to see, and it'll be interesting to see how, you know, everyone else does uh, with that. So let's uh, over here though. We're going to create the vineyard bowmen because although they only have a missile attack of two guys, them on the walls, they will still do a lot of damage. So, what else do we have? And I'm thinking... Are you a, just a lever? Yes, you are. Thinking these Thorn Guard, because the Spear Wall is pretty much, you know, unbreakable. So, that'll be nice. We're also going to put uh, Karasant onto very high tax rate. Now, in terms of the plan, guys, in terms of the plan going forward, we could go for Mornithel quite early. And, you know, I want to go for it relatively early, but not too early. I know that doesn't make a huge amount of sense, but, yeah... Relatively early, not too early. So, what we're going to do is we are going to go for Ilanin, Carverad straight away. And pretty much you can go two ways with Dorwinian. Uh, you can scramble for Rovanian over here, which is something that I really do want to do. I want to take as much of this as possible before Rune. But Rune will always attack us about, you know, turn 10 to 15. So, I'm thinking of leaning, leaving Mornothel for now because it's a rebel settlement that they will have to take and go through. And it's got a really big garrison. So if they go and, you know, destroy the garrison at Mornithel, we can then come. However, what I might consider doing, if we have a strong enough army, once we've taken Alanin and Carvrad, is just going straight for Mornithel. Uh, and I want you guys to let me know in the comments, because it'll likely be about turn three or four, uh, episode three or four when we get to that point. So, uh, yeah, let us know what you think would be a good idea uh, for uh, taking Mornithel down here. We could also potentially go Ilan in Carverad and then get a ship and come and take these lands because these lands are quite rich and getting the whole of the Sea of Rune early is something that's very, very powerful. You get so much money from the Sea of Rune trading across here. So it's nice to have as many ports as possible. That's why we've built these ports straight away because that just over time just gets greater and greater and greater and becomes more and more and more powerful. Uh, so, very nice. So, let us uh, click the end turn after turn one. Oh, and see what happens. That was interesting music, wasn't it? <laughs> but I'm hoping, you know, the rebels will attack us. But we shall see. It's a little bit slow on the first turn all the time, remember, guys. Because the AI is getting all its scripted resources. Um, so, it's always a little bit slow on the first turn. But we shall see them. Once they've all, uh, once they've all clicked in, there we are. It'll start to go and it'll go fine. Um, but yeah, really excited for this campaign, guys. I hope you uh, you are too. I do really like Vale of Darwinian. I love the choice. Uh, but why would you not go for the Elven choice? I don't know. <laughs> like, the Elven choice is always just the better one. Um, you know, you, you're not going to struggle with the economy overall, unless you just want the, the human units. Okay, so they didn't actually, you know, leave the city. We're going to accept that. So what I'm going to do, then, is remove the Avari Shadows... And I'm hoping this turn they will accept it. If not, I probably won't go and attack them. What I'll do is I'll send, you know, this second army after Carverad. Mm, no, we, we want to send them all together. Problem with assaulting this is is the walls are just so powerful, guys. They are so powerful. They will just... I know they're not Ballista Towers, but they still do so much damage. Right, with you, we're going to move you down... I want Athel here in there because, yeah, he uh, costs a lot of money. So let's get him in there. And, yeah, we're not losing too much money with the upkeep of 160 from those guys. We're back to making money again now. So in Karasant, yeah, that Mason's Hall, probably not going to be so useful. We're going to stick you guys up in there as well. And, yeah, I'm hoping this turn they do attack. I wanted to keep the Rovanian Riders there because they all, they have cavalry. Oh, here we are. I forgot about trading with you guys. So if you... Hmm. 
accepted that. So I'm thinking, you know, if we trade, try and get map information for 800. Uh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the standard thing of giving them like 10 gold. There we are. To try and reset them. They rejected our 10 gold gift. Are you kidding me? What about map for map? No, they're not interested anymore. I wanted to try and sell them map information so we could get some gold, but I guess we'll wait till next turn. We'll try it again. And then if not, we'll uh, we'll march up north to Dale and the dwarves. Because although we have trade agreements and alliances with Dale and um, the woodland realm, we don't quite have one with the dwarves as of yet. So, so yeah, we'll... Uh, Come on, attack me, independent realms. Surely, surely. Send emissary to Mordor. Really? Are they just scared of the cavalry? If I take another one, we will win, but it'll be a very bloody battle. So, I think we're just going to take it slow, guys. I could go ultra-aggressive there. But I do want this, this army to retain itself for quite a while. Retain its strength. And... I know we're losing a little bit of money, but we're not losing too much. Let's have a look in here. Yeah, these guys are all free upkeep. These guys are free upkeep. So I think we're kind of in a perfect situation with that right now. Yes. This guy isn't yet, so that's slightly annoying. But if he's not, what we can do then is just move all these guys, because none of them are free upkeep, into here. And it'll automatically choose the most expensive upkeep ones. So we'll stay with that. It's three turns, though. It, it, it's quite a long time. If I remove the cavalry... The cavalry is the thing that's going to break their morale, though. Um, How many turns? It's three more turns. I think it's okay. I don't think it's too much of a worry. Going after Alanin straight away. You know, it is going to be a bloody, bloody battle if we go after them. Because they will man the walls. So... I think being sensible here and being a bit slower is fine. I don't want to go ultra-aggressive. I know I'm ultra-aggressive in, like, RAS and stuff like that. But Divide and Conquer is a very different mod. Um, and often if you just go ultra-aggressive, you know, you lose a battle. You lose a load of troops. How do you recover that? It's really hard to. Um, so, yeah. I think we go a little bit slower at the start. And then we will assault Carverad. Carverad will be the one... Where we will want to assault. Because it's a town, it won't do so much damage with its walls as, say, the uh, the walls of the other one. Of Ilanin. So let's try and go... Let's go for 600 this turn. Or 700, potentially. Really? 500? Oh my god, really? God damn. That's so annoying. <laughs> journey planned out. Why won't they accept my, my lovely uh, offers? Let's go for the grain exchange over here. How many turns? Three turns until the ports are done as well, which will be very nice. Yes. Now, before the next turn, what we will do is move, you know, a couple of these troops back in there. Probably the Thorn Bladesman and the Avari Shadows, just because it make it'll make that battle slightly easier because they will sally out on the last turn. Oh, what is that music? I've never heard that one before. That sounded <laughs> that was interesting, but yeah, not heard that one before. Very cool. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I. It's it's like going against my nature not to assault Ilarin right now, but I think it's the sensible and better decision. Especially with the elven troops, we want to conserve them as much as possible because right now we can't, you know, we can't take them back. So we want to conserve them as much as possible. Um, and we might as well only wait one more turn. Now, I know it's slow. I know it's slow. And many of you will want to see us attack there. But, you know, I want to conserve as much as I can early on. So let's go for... If we go for, say... Well, what's the upkeep on those guys? 235. It is quite a large upkeep. I think going with those guys, that'll be plenty enough. And then what we'll do is we'll move these guys into here. What you need to do is get onto that ship. So get on there, and then we'll send you up north. And uh, we're only two more turns until that's done. So let's uh, end the turn again.
Oh, it is really going against my nature being this slow, but I think it's better. You're always a bit nervous on the first episode of a uh, Let's Play as well, because, you know, there's so many more views on the first episode, and you don't want to be too aggressive and crazy, and you don't want to be too conservative and boring, so I guess I've been boring to start with, so, yeah. Um, but no, it's fine. Uh, but it is going against my nature a little bit, but this will be such an easier battle to win, so there's no point, you know, absolutely ruining ourselves, especially when they have cell swords and some Rovanian Riders. But yeah, I think it will be relatively easy. So I'll see you on the battle map, guys. Here we are. And of course, there's no uh, pausing right at the start. So we're going to just pause just to get all these guys off the rams. And then we'll just pause quickly. And what we're going to do is... There's the entrance. I kind of want to be in front of these like sort of siege towers. And we're going to do the old V formation. V for victory, of course. So get you guys running. And then we're going to get our archers here. Just in the back in the middle. Hopefully being able to fire through that. And we'll have our cavalry on this side. So let's play. And speed it up. And see what happens. Oh, cool. We've got some... Um, yeah, we've got some nice med 2 music. Very nice. Can you guys not fire yet? Very close. I'm going to move you forward for now. So that you can fire at them while they're forming up. I'm hoping you can now. Just one of them. Even the Moriquendi Sentinels can't. So I think... Get forward. And then we'll move them backwards in a second. Now they should be able to fire. Halt. Oh, I should have had a look. At what our... The Light of Elbereth. Okay, cool, yeah. 150% own... Uh, army combat effectiveness plus five own troop morale and what we really want to focus on you guys halt by it is those cavalry boys if we can stick you all on guard mode what we're going to do with you can we not put you on i thought you could put you on shield wall put you guys on shield wall that's it uh, and you two fire at them i'm going to bring you across They're going straight into the Avari Warriors. I don't think that's a great idea for them. Because that cavalry is not the best. So fire at the Hunters. In fact, no. Fire at the Cell Swords. If they're not behind the... Uh... Okay, they're still firing at them. Fire at the Cell Swords. And then we're going to... Just come back slightly. Yeah, we've absolutely destroyed those Ravanians. Problem here. The Avari... Sp Whoa, they have such a range. That is an unreal range not realize i had such a good range once they get into the fight what we'll do is we'll turn around and start firing at them so you're gonna fire guys or, or what these guys are in shield wall now as well which is quite nice the ravanian spearmen are trash so we're gonna try and go and, and attack them uh where's the cell swords cell swords cell swords there you are so you can see this V formation, it allows you to fire a lot more effectively without firing into your own men. And they do tend to, uh, you know, charge into uh, the enemy as well. Uh, charge into our melee troops rather than anything else, which is quite good. And when we're, when we're in this position, you guys, let's get you in. And hopefully you can surround them and do some damage. We're going to charge into the Rovanian Spearmen. The Thorn Guard are taking a bit of damage from the Cell Swords. So what we're going to do, we're going to gain our archers... Around this way. Oh, I like that horn. That is no orc horn. These guys, these uh, cavalry, remember, are, of course, uh, mercenaries. Oh, my God. He's dead already. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Let's uh, let's charge them again because they're shaken. Come on, boys. That should break them, hopefully. Oh, they're firing their javis into my boys now, which is not as nice. I mean, if they charge these guys, they're both really good in melee, so it shouldn't be a problem. Now get back out. They're broken already. So I think you should charge these guys. I'm not too bothered about the Cell Swords. Those Rovanian Riders. They did. Oh, they actually did do quite a bit of damage to the Avari Shadows. Oh, hopefully. I was hoping it would be the Moriquendi Sentinels. So we've broken pretty much everyone. Just need to break this Cell Sword now. So I'm I'm willing to use my, uh, my guys to, to charge in there. Let's go. How many have we lost? 11%. Is that not everyone? 
There we are. Fantastic. So that was... You can see, if we were attacking these walls, guys, we would have taken so much damage just from the towers. Never mind, you know, fighting up on the walls. So I'm happy we only lost 67. We probably would have lost about 300, 400 if we'd assaulted the walls. So I think it was a good decision overall. It might have been a bit slower, but I think it was a good decision in the long run. Oh, Avari Warriors. Look at that. 152. Uh, yeah, the Avari Shadows, 59. But no healing. Healing for the Bladesmen and the Warriors. Oh, that's okay. You know, we still did some good damage. And those archers are going to be fine. So I'll see you back on the campaign map, guys. Here we are. And I think what we'll do is... I think we'll just occupy. I don't think we need to sack. Although... You know... I, yeah, it's not got enough population. And we gain more Florins from, from looting, from just occupying. So we might as well. Now, garrisoning this city is going to be a bit of an issue to start with. Yeah, that might have been a little bit of an oversight from me. I should have recruited one of these guys to go in there. But I think we can leave it alone for now. And come... If we leave Ilan in, how unhappy are they? 50%. It's not too bad. I mean, the Thorn Crossbowmen are really bad. So... I'm happy to leave them in there for now. And then what we'll do is we'll swap them out in a second. Now, we're going to start losing a little bit of cash when we move uh, Norway down to here. Because we're going to take these guys out of the uh, settlement. We'll build a watchtower so that they can come and join. And we're going to go for straight for Carverad over here. There we are. Looking very nice. And that thousand gold... We're building everywhere, but we are going to lose money next turn. So, I'm wondering whether we use it to buy up another troop. We could buy another ship. I mean, a spy would be quite good. So, let's let's plop in a spy there. And let's... I think we'll build a vineyard levy as well. So, we've got a, a garrison for Carverad. Get you on there. And let's uh, get up the uh, Kelduin. Up to Esgaroth. Lake Town. And there is normally in this settlement a rebel like army running around. If there is, what we'll do is just completely try and ignore it and attack the settlement. And hopefully they will come and try and relieve the siege. And that will make Carverad a lot quicker proposition than what we had before. Oh, I do like this little uh, this music after each turn. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Very nice. That is no orc horn. Um, but yeah, Santan Wee doing nicely and those ports now should be making you know us some good money and hopefully catapulting our income upwards because we've just built them see 1400 there and it was 800 right at the start we were making here and this was only like 700 so that's you know it's it's building up by about 200 which is quite nice it doesn't seem like a lot but over time it really is and then karasant's now making some decent cash as well um, in terms of upgrading Karasant, I'm going to put it down to high just for now. And that will mean we'll lose a little bit of money to start with. Now, main thing here is not getting attacked by anyone else. Although it doesn't look like they actually have left the city. Normally, they tend to leave the city. So, I guess we'll assault Carverad then. Because it's a big town, it should be a bit easier to spread our troops around. So, I'm thinking, you know, few of those. We'll go for siege towers and ladders. That'll be our main option. The good thing with ladders on, on uh, Divide and Conquer and Medieval 2 is you can run with them. Unlike goddamn... <laughs> unlike anything else. Unlike uh, Rome, where they just walk up to the walls and hope that you, you don't get completely ruined. At the minute, it doesn't look like... Um, Rune is too bothered. The reason why I'm not upgrading the Mer Naberka guys is because Rune, when they declare war on they uh, war on you, they love to go for Naberka. So that's the, the other reason why I got Ethel here off there as well, just to get him off. Um, so yeah, there's there's no point in you know upgrading Naberka really because Rune will go for it and it's not defensible either. Um, so yeah, that's the main reason. Now we have. You guys can go up to Ilanin. And you guys can come across to Norway across here. And you guys keep on going. Wonder whether... 
So if we have a look, it's still Rebel up here. So they've taken this settlement, but they haven't taken... I think that's Rawberg, is it? Up there. They haven't taken Rawberg quite yet. So that's quite good for us. Uh, so we'll keep on going east. We might... This army is definitely strong enough to take Mornithel right now. So we might go for Mornithel, you know, straight after this. That does put us into, you know, conflict with Rune early. But, you know, taking out Rune early is not a big issue, is it? Because Mirkwood is not a hard enemy to fight. Let's be honest. Mirkwood is not good. So, taking out Mornithel and getting to war with a hard enemy first might be a better option. Might be. Not 100%, but it might be. <laughs> so, let's see. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, let you guys have a little bit of a, a few comments on that. But I will be recording, you know, at least two of these episodes today. So, if you do comment and I do something different in a future episode, guys, just, uh, just know that it, it was probably because... Um, I pre-recorded the episodes, that sort of thing. Right, let's keep on going. And I don't think it looks like there is a rebel army on the way there, is there? So, that's another five-turn siege. And we're not going to take five turns this time. I was really hoping that the, the rest of their army was, was outside of the city. That would have been so useful for us. So you get in there. I'm going to bring you down. Your orders, my lord. Hmm. I mean, it's not a good army, is it? It's just the walls are just so annoying to deal with. And what troops do we have to assault them? Yeah, we've got a few different troops. The vineyard levies would be a good one to soak up all the uh, all the uh, Ravanian hunters' fire. So, yeah, let's... Uh... Let's worry about our diplomat for now. Oh, we were going to wait one more turn anyway to get the rest of the ladders because we only have two siege towers on us right now. So I think we've got everything we want with these guys, apart from we could sell them some map information. So I'm hoping 800 gold will be good. They've accepted. Good. And uh, let's go up to Esgarol. Uh, sorry, um, yeah. The Lonely Mountain. Uh, right. Yeah, we've got one more turn to wait. I'm going to just smash those in a little bit more. I mean, going through the... Actually ramming down the gates in, in this mod is quite good. So let's go for that. Yes. One more turn and then we will assault it. We've got our spy down here having a look around. See whether we can see how where those big uh, armies that was in Lest right at the start have gone. Um, in fact, it'd probably be quite good just to keep the spy around this region, just to make sure that they're not coming up to attack Strondost. Uh, always, always bad when they start attacking Strondost, because you know the war at that point has really, really started. So, oh, we've got a, a bride. Fantastic. Right, let's uh, shuffle down here. Burr Americus over this way. Yeah, they take a lot of it on that uh, first turn. They take it all the way down to Mordor on that first turn. So it's more these sort of settlements that we want to see them, whether they're fighting up there. Now, you, my friend, can come down here. You'll be a good little uh, meat shield for attacking these boys. So let's get into the battle, guys. I will see you on the battle map. So here we are. It's a little bit foggy, which is fine. But what we're going to do... It's quite a large settlement, as you can see. So there's plenty of opportunity for us to, you know, move around different areas. So what we are going to do is we are going to use our sort of uh, rubbish troops here to really, you know, just hold the fire of those men uh, up there. And, yeah, we're going to use the Thorn Crossbowmen. The Thorn Crossbowmen are actually... Hmm, no, actually, yeah, no. Thorn Crossbowmen are going to try and get the ladders up up this, these walls up this way. I think they'll they'll face most of their troops at the front. We're not going to use our elven troops, like I've said, to start with. So we're going to use the Thorn Crossbowmen here to draw fire. And we're going to use our levies over potentially... Although this is quite a good little area, isn't it? So we'll get you there, and we'll get our Thorn Levies there. And in terms of the rest of the troops, they should be organized a bit better than this. But we're going to leave our Elven troops here as a bit of a distraction. And our Elven Archers, we're going to come around to this side. 
Going to get them there. In fact, we could leave the archers over this side for a distraction, but no, it's okay. We'll leave the elven troops there, and then the rest of our men... Uh, not you guys. These guys. Uh, and the, the cavalry are going to come round this side. And we're going to use, potentially... Hmm... Yeah, I, I, it's just so hard assaulting walls in this because they're so brutal, aren't they? They are so strong. So we'll use you guys, and then we'll probably use you to go there. And just our Thorn Bladesmen, our standard Thorn Boys over this side. Then, in fact, the Amanyar Swordmasters, you're going to get a ram. We're going to bring you around this way. It's such a brutal, brutal... Uh, game for sieges this so let's see where they've gone on the walls they're actually not in a good position that's great so fantastic for us so let us come up there we'll start our Amanyar who are you firing oh they have a load of men behind there so the walls will attack us here and then these guys you're just here to uh, I mean be amazing if they could run the siege towers I know that would be stupid but it would be great you guys are going to go there I'm going to move you guys slightly forward. So hopefully we're just, you know, distracting the men on this side. And you can see they're actually already coming round this way. And once we're into the city, we should be good. We should be uh, in quite a good position. I'm not going to move my Amanyar Swordmasters just yet. But shooting the privateer cavalry is something we want to do. So shoot those boys if you can. Although firing over the walls is never really a great... Way of hitting a lot of men, doing a lot of damage. But once we're, you know, on the walls up here and we get down, we should be able to be in a good position to open the gates, that sort of thing. I'm really not bothered about the rest of these troops over here. They can, you know, they can go away. And what we'll do is we'll just go for the town square. If the AI is going to try and fight all my trash troops over here, I'm really not bothered. I'm really not bothered. They can do that. We'll go for the town square instead. Come on, boys. Get that ladder on the walls. Yeah, these guys, they're getting shredded, you can see. So this is what would have happened if we'd gone for Elan in straight away. We would have been shredded. So what we're going to do is once you guys are up, get down this way. Get running, if you will. These guys need to get down as well. I would like to take that gateway. But once we've fought through these guys, we can. So get get going, guys. Hurry up. We'll speed it up. How is everyone doing up this way? They're not quite all on the siege tower yet. It's going to take them a little while. But I'm glad that the enemy has decided to leave all its men up there. Okay, we're out now. So what we're going to do, go after these Rovanian spearmen. And I think these guys, the Dale, uh, Dorwinian infantry, you know, five attack is not great. But it's a lot better than that Dorwinian... Uh, uh, Darwinian, so Rovanian Spearman. So what we might do, in fact, is get into, get there, get into a siege, uh, siege thing. What we'll do is we'll actually come through the gate, and then what we can do is charge the Amanyar Swordmasters forward. Darwinian Swordmasters, sorry. The Amanyar Swordmasters, they're a, uh, an elven unit, aren't they? Um, oh, looks like, uh, we're getting, uh, we're going to get fought by the Rovanian hunters over this way. So you guys come down through that gate. Hopefully we win the gate. Or do we have to go through the gate? I've forgotten. I've played so much Rome. If you go through the gate, open that gate for us, please. Just open the gate for us. That's our gate. Cool. Right, now it's time to get the uh, Swordmasters in. And what we'll do is we'll actually send our Moriquendi Sentinels in here as well. So these guys, they should be in shield wall. How are they winning this? We should be winning that. Get you on guard mode. We're getting shot a lot by the, uh, the towers still, like we've seen. These guys are just going to get shredded. We know that, but that's fine. Uh, and what we'll do... Why are you going that way? We should. Oh, that gate's not ours anymore. 
That's part of the problem. So what we'll do is we'll get you guys up here and we'll get these guys up this way. And the Amonyar sword, not the Amonyar, the other sword masters. Yeah, you, not, you guys need to get up here as well. So we'll speed it up. Speed up. It's so brutal sieges on this game. God damn. Why have you left half your unit up here? Guys, <laughs> that's not helpful. Really not helpful. Get up here, for God's sake. What are you doing? Don't stay there. Come on. <laughs> I would like to get my uh, cavalry in. So now we've got you guys up here. You guys are fighting them. Swordmasters, let's get you down. And the Moriquendi Sentinels, they can, uh, you know, come onto the side here and actually start firing down at these boys. Yeah, come on, guys. Get up here, for God's sake. Speed it up a bit. So brutal. So brutal, these siege battles. Especially on very hard. And then when you're up here, fire at them. And they're going to get fired at by the towers so much as well. We just all know, we all know how powerful these towers are. Right, you guys, let's get you round. You should be able to beat the Privateer Cavalry. You have really good stats. And the main thing is our general here. How powerful that general can be. So fire down there. And you guys fire at the Rovanian Spearmen, potentially. These guys are, like, nearly dead fighting Rovanian Hunters, bro. That's not a good sign, is it? <laughs> Probably... Okay, that's that's a big help. <laughs> right, you guys, you hold 16 of you. And the 14 thorn men. Hoping we can, uh, you know... I want you guys to come down here. Like, the fighting over this side is, is done. Remember, we do have our elven troops still. But yeah, the fighting, well, it's not quite done, but yeah, it's not great. <laughs> it's not going well. Of course it wasn't supposed to. They were supposed to be the, uh... Okay, the Rovanian spearmen are scared, which is great. Hmm. So we just need to try and break through this quickly so we can then take the, uh, take the gates. We might have to lose the Avari. The Avari shadows are going to die, which is a bit unfortunate. Who are these guys firing at now? Those guys up there. I mean, that's not the greatest of targets, but using your arrows is definitely better than not using it. If you could fire at, say, these guys, that would be great. The battle is very much they can't quite. Those guys have run away. So, these seven Thorn Bladesman guys. Let's, uh, let's speed it up. Try and take that gate, will you? They've all broken. That's my gate now. Good. Let's go. Now what we need to do is we need to get the uh, Swordsmasters up here as well as quick as possible. What we might do is just leave our Moriquendi Sentinels up on the walls. Swordmasters, you come here. And you guys will get you here as well. And hopefully we're not at a point where we're getting fired at by the enemy. Just take out those guys quickly, please. That wasn't the greatest of uh, charges, I'm not going to lie. So come back. Guys, come back. <laughs> God, they, they, don't, they don't like, you know, rules and, uh, and orders, these guys. If you would get on the walls there, that would be a lot better for me. So then we can actually fire into these guys. Guys, that's not where I want you to be. Come on. There we are. That's better. And I think you can probably have a good good line of sight now for those boys. What the hell? Where are you going? Bro. Get there. So we're not getting fired up by the walls. Right. Now we need to go and take the town square. And how long do we have left? We've got ages. That's fine. Fire at them. You fire at them as well. Yeah, I think we you know, we've done we've done all right here. It's not been the the best of battles. 
for us, but it's not been horrendous either. The main thing that we can do now, though, is, like, if we take the town square, we can just get everyone up here into the town square. So, let's get those boys and then try and route, the, route everyone else with our cavalry. If you guys would run, that would be great. <laughs> Shouldn't have a problem killing these guys. Yeah, there we are. So now, once they're dead, which they should be dead now, we can probably try and route the rest of them. Where? Oh, kill them. There's one privateer cavalry guy left. <laughs> so this should be ours. So now we just wait. So where's the Moriquendi Sentinels? What I'm going to do is get the Swordmasters out this way. We'll leave you guys out this way. To try and block anyone. I know there's not many of you. But look how brutal that battle has been, guys. For like most of our troops. Obviously, we still have our elves, which is great. I wanted to conserve them. But you can just see how brutal those uh, towers are. And I'm sure any most of you who've played Medieval 2 will just know... How brutal that is in general. What are these guys doing? Get down, for God's sake. And, uh, yeah, let's get up there. And I don't think they're actually going to move. So what I might do, guys, is I might uh, cut it here. And if they don't move, that's fine. We'll uh, we'll just wait in the city and I'll, uh, I'll cut it uh, to either them coming after us or, you know, us winning. So I'll see you in a sec. Here we are, guys. Victory. And we were going to end the battle there. They didn't actually, you know, come around. And you can see, <laughs> although we lost less than them, it was pretty even. And that's just how brutal uh, these battles are. But look at the Avari Shadows. 200. It's just a shame. You know, they got no healing there. The Vineyard Levy's got all the healing. Oh, no. <laughs> that is the problem with them fighting first. Um, oh, nightmare. But anyway, you know. Some of them did. The Thorn Blazeman, 144 casualties. Although he took a lot, that's fair play. That's quite good. The Swordmasters did terrible. 28. I know they were fighting Privateer Cavalry, though. That's probably why. Uh, but everyone didn't do... Uh, you know, they didn't do so well. The Moriquendi Sentinels, though. Look at that. Fantastic. But anyway, guys, I will see you back on the campaign map. Here we are. And I think we're just going to occupy once again. I don't think we need to... Uh, you know, sack or anything like that. Because I don't want to destroy any buildings. Uh, well, oh, well. <laughs> I don't have any buildings anyway, so, okay. But look how just damaged our army is now. It's, it's pretty, pretty brutally damaged. In terms of the cash we're making now, though, straight up to 2,000, which is great. I think what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll leave behind the vineyard levies. Hmm. And we're going to go straight away. Okay, we've just got enough. I probably should have checked that. Yes, going to retrain these boys, and then we're going to go. We're probably we're going to go for Mornithel, I think. I think that's the option, guys. I think that's the best option right now. Make sure that we can then, you know, get the Elven choice early, and then basically what that's going to do for us is allow us then to recruit Elven troops very early as well. So we'll try after this turn to build in Santan Wheat up here. Yes, let's go to uh, uh, not to Dale, yes. up to Erebor. And let us uh, trade with the dwarves. Which hopefully make an alliance. There we are. And I, let's try and sell map information. And hopefully sell it. 700? Okay. Just accepted. Good. Let's go sell some map information to Thranduil as well. And then we'll probably, you know, trade with Dolgador to start with. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we'll see. So, I'm, what I'm going to do straight away is probably build this meeting hall. Although the vineyard, oh, the vineyard levies are not actually free for now. Um, so, we'll build the meeting hall to get that 5% extra law. Oh, the public order is now... Oh, that's Ilanin. Yeah, so that, that public order gets off 70%. Just in case, you know, anything causes that public order to go down. Like unrest or a spy being in there, that sort of thing. So, yeah. Right, let's end the turn, guys. Let's end the turn and see what happens. Oh, I still love that every time. <laughs> that is cool. Um, so yeah. Oh, you can see. Look at look at Rune in, Rune in the bottom right corner now. 
they are coming up towards Strondost. So, yeah, I don't think using Mornothel as a buffer anymore is a great idea. We might even, you know, we might even go... I'd just go scout it out, see what troops they have. It would be nice if they took some of the troops out of the city, but I've never seen them do that. They love to leave them in there. And let's have a look. Who can we retrain? These boys... The Rovanian Riders are not worth retraining. How long? Four turns. So they should actually be able to retrain maybe next turn or the turn after. Um, and then potentially, let's go for the Thorn Guard. We don't actually have any Thorn Guard in this army. Uh, yeah, let's go for that. Get those boys retrained. Carverad. And what we could do is, if we want to save a bit of money next turn... Is send these boys down to the fort already and get them ready to uh, to go into the fort just so that it saves us a bit of money uh, on our upkeep for a turn. But here come the uh, the rune, the rune. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in one more thorn guard in there because they are a very good defensive unit. Because what they tend to do is attack both at the same time. So yeah, we'll do that just for now. What we'll do with our boat, we'll bring him back down. We don't need him up there anymore. And he can ferry, ferry troops around for what's needed. The one problem with Mornothel is that it has no buildings inside it again. So, like, these places that we've taken pretty much have no buildings. So that's a bit of an, ir uh, an issue. Right, let's see whether they'll accept a, like, 900 this time. Yeah, they did. Good. Barely accepted. Good. <laughs> And then we'll go talk to Dolgudor. Dolgudor. Very good. Glorious. Yes. I am enjoying this. This is very fun. Uh, I love being back on Divide and Conquer. It's, it's such a fun... Um, such a fun mod. One of the best mods for Total War ever. Um, new mission. Orcs of Gundabad. I mean... Yes. I was going to go talk to Dolgudor. Yes. But, yeah. Or you can go talk to the Orcs of Gundabad if you want us to, uh, Council. Definitely. Now, we've built the, the meeting hall up there. So, I think, you know, we're going to save our money for now. Just for a couple of turns. Let's see whether... Yeah, we can actually retrain those boys. I'll retrain that Rovanian Riders as well. I'm thinking we'll be able to retrain that Dorwinian Infantry next turn. So, the rest of you guys... Yes. Let's get you moving. You're already not being paid for in in the city. We might leave the Avari Shadows there. So we'll send, you know, all these guys down into the fort so that they'll, you know, take... There we are. There's Mornithel. You can see it has a pretty good garrison. How long to siege it down? Eight turns. I think with this army, they will sally out the army that we're going to have. Hopefully, because, you know, ideally that would that, that's the best thing that we want to happen. We don't want them to, you know, to siege it down for eight turns again. <laughs> and I'm definitely not going to assault the walls with that many infantry to defend the walls and that many missile uh, javi troops and crossbowmen. There's no chance we want to do that. So let's come back across here, make sure that they're not still thinking about attacking us. We'll leave the Thorn Guard in there for now. What I'm going to do is build the Meeting Hall so we get an extra unit for free upkeep in there. So that'll be good. Uh, we can get some more High Paladins at some point. Keep those guys retraining. That's good. Uh, Ilanin's fine. Carverad is fine too. Good. Nice. Keep you bringing down. You Keep you... Oh, I can't speak today. Keep you coming down here. Santanui. Yeah, keep that retraining going. Let's end the turn again. Let's see what happens. I'm glad we're starting to make money now as well, which is great. And the more and more trade we get with everyone, the more ports we have along the river and in the lake, the more money that we will make overall. So, you know, keeping on going with the trade. And you can see that Mornithel has, like, highways, I think, already. Um, not normal roads. Definitely paved roads, at least. Uh, we did have a look at it, didn't we? Uh, well, but Santanui and all those ones, they have already roads, which is great. So does Carverad, just normal roads, though. So we've managed to retrain those boys. Let's get you, the last one, to retrain. 
And let's move all of you down into the fort. So that should help with our income for one turn as well, which is great. Let's have a look to see whether... Yeah, they've not actually come back up to Strondos this time. They're scared, aren't they? Scaredy kits. Um, anything we can build in these couple of settlements. In terms of the culture, it's already pretty highly Northman, as you can see. So, yeah. We'll build those in as soon as we can, really. Get that culture going up. Um, and once we're, at, once we're all in here, I don't think we'll need to wait. I think we can go forward at that point, and I'll organize the army, and we'll siege down Mornithel, and hopefully... Hopefully... They uh they will sally out. Uh, you know they haven't really wanted to do that so far. The the AI, but we'll have to take out. If they don't, we'll take out a couple of troops, a couple of our weaker troops, um, because we'll do the same tactic if they do sally out. Where we'll do the V formation, um, and fire into them as we're uh, charging around the back of them because they don't actually have any cavalry. I don't believe, if I remember correctly. Um, so yeah, we'll come into the fort now. And next turn, we'll go after Mornithel, which will be good. So we've got Strondos there. That means these two guys are now have free upkeep, which is great. That's really going to help out. Now let's see what we can build in, say, Karasant. We can build the Master Mason's Hall. Build the Market as well. How much is that going to make a difference? It's actually quite a bit. That's quite nice. How much does it cost? 1,400. Yeah, I'm definitely going to take that in. The other building that's always really good is the wineries. We'll bring you down as well. You're probably not going to get involved to start with, but it'll be fine. Um, and then up here. Let's go for, I think, the standing stones in Carverad to keep them happy. Uh, get that culture up. Right then, let's end the turn again, guys. And get you moving across. Ah, good. Well, I think it's been a good first episode anyway. And if you have enjoyed, guys, a like is always appreciated. It does really help the channel out. Um, so, yeah, that'd be fantastic. But it looks like we are going to be at war with Rune very, very soon. They're bringing a diplomat up. I don't know why. It's kind of weird, but oh well. Right, let's uh, let's get this army out. We're going to organize it properly, though, first. We'll go with our missile boys first. And you are the only two missile boys, so that's fine. Then we'll go for our thorn guard. Uh, then we'll go for the bladesmen. Then the Amonyar. Uh, it's not... I keep calling them the Amonyar swordsmen. Then we'll go for our elves. And then we'll go for our cavalry. So, let's come forward. We will build the siege equipment. But I'm hoping we don't need to use it. I mean, we're not going to assault the city because we will just get shredded. How close it was last time and we were fighting absolute trash monger, monger troops. Just terrible, terrible troops. And we lost just as much as, as them because we were assaulting the walls. Their walls will have done so much damage. Let's go for the Mason's Hall up here. And then in Alanin, we'll probably... We'll go for the land clearance as well to get a bit of extra cash. And then next turn, we'll look at building something in Strondost. Probably the Mason's Hall as well. So we're just making things cheaper over time for ourselves. And then we'll go for the Great Hall. And that'll allow us to, you know, get a few more troops stationed in Strondos and get free upkeep. So, guys, well, I think we're going to end the first episode there. So I hope you enjoyed. Please do like, subscribe, all that good stuff. It really does help the channel out. And I will see you all again, guys, on the next video.